Hi everyone! Today I received a surprise package from Johanna Basford, so I'm really really excited to open it up with you and see what it's got inside. I'm guessing there's going to be a copy of the new book, 30 Days of Creativity. Um, so yeah, really excited. Let's have a look what's inside. Pull this off. It's got lovely tape there that's been decorated by Joanna. Uh, let's see if I can get this open without breaking a nail. Not very likely. Uh, oh, that part's not meant to come off. <laughs> okay, right. Okay, so we've got a little present wrapped in here. We'll just take this away and then we can see what we've got. This is beautiful paper. It's a lovely pastel baby blue colour and it's got all of these different illustrations on it. So what have we got here? We've got cakes, we've got fish, pencils, slices of pie, um, there's a kettle, some flowers and butterflies, things like that. It's really, really sweet. So I'm going to attempt not to rip this. Again, it's very likely that I will. So I've got to be super careful. Not that I know, I know what I'm going to do with it, with it. You know, I kept some wrapping paper from <clears throat> a previous parcel from Joanna for ages and I never did anything with it. So I'm not too concerned if it rips. It's just really nice. It's a shame, isn't it, to rip it. Make sure I've got you in frame as well. I don't want to come out of frame. Okay. So this is the contents. We have, first of all, a set of Statler pigment liners with a sharpener, an eraser and a pencil as well. Pencil is 2B. And for the pigment liners, we've got a 0 0.3, 5 and 7. So some really, really fine tips there for us to, I guess, do some drawing. So that's great. And we've got a little card with a spherical illustration on it. Uh, to Claire, send you a huge hug. You've got this. Stay strong, super mum. Oh, and here's the new book. Much love, Joanna. Lovely. Thank you very much, Joanna. And what is next? Oh, we've got a set of 24 super soft colour pencils. These are Statler Design Journey pencils, which I don't have. So really, really interested to try these out. Apparently, they work really well on black and white. So they must be super pigmented then. Let's see what it says on the back. High quality coloured pencil, super soft lead, giving particularly high coverage. <clears throat> Excuse me. For amazing bright colours on both white and black paper, wood from certified sustainably managed forests. Fantastic. So let's have a quick nosy at this then, if I can get into it. These nails are more trouble than they're worth, you know. Okay. Let's take this to slide out. Yep. Again, just making sure that you're in frame because I've got my camera really high up this time and I can't quite see what you can see so I'm just going to keep checking so if I go quiet for a sec that's what I'm doing okay so there we go we've got a little booklet that comes with it it says wild at heart the design journey colored pencil range high quality products for your creative journey so let's have a look I don't think these are watercolor because that would have been mentioned but there is some watercolor pencils mentioned in the book there's also pastel pencils as well so these are the super soft let's see what it says about them i think they're the super soft i did say that didn't i does it say on yeah super soft so again high quality super soft lead high coverage amazing bright colors um so really excited to test those out i don't think there's any other information that i need to read on there i think it's just all about the other types of pencils that they do so we'll be giving those a swatch and see what they're like in a moment. But I think the main event is checking out the new book, isn't it? It is for me anyway. It's always, always really exciting when Joanna's got a new book out. The production quality is always, and um, she's just fantastic. The artwork's always brilliant. We've got some more paper here that I'm gonna attempt not to rip, but it's very difficult because it's like a tissue paper. Um, Okay, don't rip it Claire, this should be the challenge in and of itself. And there we go, did a better job with that than the main paper. Okay, so now I've got another sticker to get, oh, Joanna what is it with you and your sticky stuff? <laughs> oh, 
I've ripped it anyway. I don't think I'm going to be able to. Shall I just slide it out? That might help. Again, I don't know what I'm going to do with the paper. Probably going to go in the drawer folded up like the other one. Oh, I've ripped it. <laughs> it was going to happen. Right, here we go. So here's the book. Sorry about my really filthy blooming desk, by the way. I've usually got some paper on here, some wallpaper or some sort of backdrop. But since I've had the room renovated, I've not had the chance to pick out some paper yet. So you've got a really mucky art desk to look at as well. Um, so here we are, 30 days of creativity, draw, colour and discover your creative self. So this is a book you've probably already seen Joanna's live videos where she went through the whole book and explained what it's all about. But just as a bit of a summary, it's a little bit of art that you can do every single day. And when I say a little bit, 10 minutes, that's all you need. Just sit yourself down for 10 minutes and pick an activity out of the book to do, whether that's drawing or colouring or whatever else is in the book. So if you can do something a little bit arty for 30 days, just a few minutes per day, it's it's gonna it's gonna lift your spirits. It's gonna um, give you opportunity to practice and get better. Uh, let's just see what she says on the back because Joanna was gonna explain it way better than me. So this is your invitation to create calm and discover more joy. In just 30 days, you can develop a creative habit that allows a little more calm and joy into your life. These easy to follow daily practices will help unleash your creative spark and build the foundation of your artistic practice. With a mix of whimsical doodles, pages of expert advice, and hang on, I'm, I lost myself then, and simple step-by-step -step drawing guides, this book is designed to nurture your inner artist. Featuring calming lavender fields, tasty treats, and blooming bouquets, each page is a celebration of things that bring us comfort and joy. And of course, there are plenty of pages to colour when you find yourself in the flow and want to remain in the creative bubble a bit longer. Pick up this book, find a pencil, and begin your next adventure. So I believe that Johanna created this book over lockdown, you know, to, to give people something to do every day. It was an idea that was bloomed and formed out of the lockdown where we were all sat at home and bored and, you know, maybe just losing faith in things a little bit. So it's really nice that this has been a product of something so rubbish. Uh, we've, we've got a beautiful book to come of it. So really liking these spheres. As I said, Joanna did do a live flip through of this where she went through every page and I did, I was present, but I tried not to look at every single page because I always like to keep things a surprise. So we've got French flat. Again, a couple of spherical images here of art supplies. And then on the inside, it's the same as that blue paper from the front um, with all of the little bits and bobs on it. And we've got the title page, some colourable elements on here as well. The paper feels the same as um, the same as always. It's the same as the one in Ivy, I think. And um, what was the last book called? Worlds of Wonder. It feels like the same paper. This, I think, let me just check. Yeah, this is going to be the US version because it's got the US spelling of colour. Um, so I'm not sure what the UK version will be like, but this feels like really, really good paper. Whether you buy the US or the UK, you always got really good paper stock when it comes to Joanna's books. So we've got the nameplate page, which she has lovingly written my name on. That's beautiful. And uh, again, I really love colouring these nameplate pages as well. And look at these fun little robots. It's really sweet. So let's have a look. We've got an introduction, a really long introduction <laughs> and some tips. I'm not going to read the whole thing but um, let's just have a skim through it. So apparently there are 15 colouring pages and 15 drawing or doodling pages. Don't worry if you don't finish the page, the only requirement is that you spend a minimum of 10 minutes on each task. So you can dip in and out and that goes for the page itself. You don't have to complete a whole page in, in the 10 minutes, of course, um, that would be more stressful than anything else. So just dip in and out, do 10 minutes a day, and you could even do different pages every day because you might get bored of doing one certain thing and want to do a bit of colouring, maybe want to do a bit of drawing. Um, just take it, take it, use it as you like, really. So, uh, the tips. Joanna says, when drawing, I like to sketch in pencil first, then draw over the pencil lines in ink. Wait for the ink to dry, then gently erase the pencil. For colouring, prefer pencils to pens that we know that already um, Joanna's a big fan of pencils and also you know if you are using ink and heavy media 
in her books they are going to bleed through so you're going to be ruining or sacrificing something that's on the other side so i think these are the same tips really that we see throughout joanna's books um it says keep track of your progress during the 30 days using the habit tracker so ah, there we go that's the habit tracker and then you can share your progress by posting photos of your work online with hashtag 30 days of creativity so then we've got some art supply um make, let me just make sure you're focused again <laughs> we've got some art supply suggestions so we've got pencils joanna uses a statler mars rotary pencil which is the clicky one i'm not sure if i've got one of those i'm sure i have just have a little peep through here while i'm thinking about it um i definitely have got a clicky pencil is this one hang on statler mars i bet this even came with the last book that joanna sent <laughs> probably um i don't i don't really draw that much i, I tend to draw on my tablet but Obviously with this, I'm gonna be drawing, so I'm gonna need that out. Uh, then we've got pens, so fine liners. Obviously we've got our Statler pigment liners, which Joanna likes to use. Then we've got erasers, white plastic eraser, which is what we've got here. Sharpener, we've also got a sharpener. Coloring pencils and other bits and bobs like tracing paper, a compass, a ruler, things like that. Habit tracker. So this is for you to be able to stay accountable on your 30 day challenge. Each day that you complete the required 10 minutes, you've got to colour in a circle. And as you start to see these circles fill with colour, you'll be motivated to keep going and not break the chain. So if you're doing it more than once, you can actually download this habit tracker sheet as a printable download from Joanna Basford's website. Okay, so first page. I love a cup of tea properly brewed in a teapot and served in a pretty teacup. I, I will drink tea out of anything, to be honest. It doesn't have to be a teacup. I'll drink it out of a, I was going to say out of a dustbin, but that's just taking it way too far. <laughs> but I will drink tea anywhere. I love tea. It says, add decorations to the teacups and coffee mugs on the opposite page. Use the designs on this page for ideas and inspiration. So you've got this page here of blank teacups. You've got some ideas of what you can do on this side, but it really is up to you how you fill these in. And again, it's just taking that 10 minutes out of your day to do something that's really not challenging. It's not stressful. It's not a demanding thing. You're not going to have to worry about, am I doing this right or wrong? Just fill in one of the teacups with a doodle. And uh, yeah, it's just it's part of cultivating that daily habit of doing something creative. So you can do that. You can do, as I say, your own things or you can copy from these now it says we need some cake to go with our tea and coffee so let's see what we've got here we've got some lovely treats imagine a lazy sunday morning spent visiting quiet little cafes and bakeries sounds heavenly doesn't it whether you enjoy your morning coffee with a slice of cherry pie or toast smothered in honey there's something for everyone in this collage of treats settle down with your pencils and begin coloring your favorite item on this opposite page Enjoying the coffee shop vibes, stay a little longer and fill the space on this page with a few more of your favourite treats. So it's giving you a bit of an option. You can either just do a little bit of colouring, colour one of these little segments on this page, whether that's a cupcake or a slice of pie or an ice cream, or you can do a little bit of doodling. So you could maybe draw your own jars of sweet treats, maybe try and sketch out what you had for breakfast that morning totally up to you how you want to challenge uh, how you want to tackle it there is something so soothing about working on a symmetrical motif complete the nature themed design on the opposite page replicating the pattern in the remaining three quarters work in pencil first then go over the lines in ink and add color work from the center outward and complete each ring of the design before moving on to the next and if you're in the mood to color you can put a little bit of life to the illustration and also around here as well so she's done the first quarter for you and then you'll be able to copy you know each quarter as the pattern dictates over here and eventually you'll end up with a spherical motif paper's really really thick really nice and it feels like it's got a light tooth to it as well on the opposite page you will find 25 imagined blooms all awaiting your colors don't worry about trying to identify each stem or about colouring them realistically. Instead, embrace the mixed up world of my inky hybrids. 
use the space below to invent a few of your own flowers. So when you do this, you could take inspiration from these flowers, maybe use these little heads and then use these leaves and little embellishments from the other flowers. Totally up to you how you want to do it. Again, if you just want to colour, that's absolutely fine. Bringing a few blossoms indoors is a simple way to spread a little cheer. Drawing flowers has the same effect on me. Fill these vases with lots of different imagined flowers. Don't get bogged down trying to replicate an exact bloom. Just have fun and make them up. Don't forget to add a few leaves and sprigs of foliage too. So we've got loads of pots, containers and vases on these shelves across this double page and it's up to you to fill them with whatever it is you want to fill them with. It could be succulents, cactus, or is it cacti? Um, it could be big beautiful exotic flowers it could be some leafy foliage totally up to you and then of course you can color in in the uh, the picture as well so i'm not going to read this whole thing because i'm aware of time but apparently marie folio often speaks about progress not perfection and it's a concept i wholeheartedly embrace practice does not make perfect it makes for progress let go of the idea of perfection so instead of perfection, you aim for progress because you can see how far you've progressed from when you start any kind of project, really. Um, it's called creative practice because it takes practice to progress. Um, and then I'm just reading this really quickly. When you were learning to write at school, I bet the letters were a bit wobbly and tricky holding that pencil. But look at you now, you can write beautifully. Well, maybe you can. I've not got great handwriting, to be honest. <laughs> um, so it just shows that things that are hard and not kind of learnt at the start just need time for you to build up that muscle memory. And, you know, that's what practice does. Just check it again on the... Just check it again on the phone to make sure that you're still in focus. I hate my phone. It just takes things out of focus all the time. Okay, no matter how old we are, a trip to the candy store is always a treat. Um, will you use rainbow colours or to add pops of vibrant colour to the little illustrations? Or will you go for muted pastel shades and pale candy tones? You could even try adding in some glitter gel pen details. That might be really, really cool to do on this page, actually, because it looks very sparkly, glittery and magic. So you can also test, um, <clears throat> test your pens at the back of the book to ensure that your ink won't bleed through. This is an inky botanical sphere, the perfect place for special words. Create your own flowery circle on the opposite page, then add quote or phrase that inspires or creates joy for you. Draw some of the flowers overlapping the circle and some crop to the outline, which creates a lovely organic feeling. So you can see here that she's overlapped some of the blooms and some of the leaves onto the circle itself, but some of them are cropped off and chopped off. So just doing that creates a little bit more interest, I think, for the eye and uh, it just looks looks really nice so that's all you've got to do on this page do you have a passion for pencils yes a weakness for washi tape mm, i've got a fair few washi tapes me too does your heart skip a beat when you see a tin of coloring pencils arranged in neat rainbow order yep art materials are our tickets to adventure they allow us to draw color and craft they literally create cheer create your dream set of coloring pencils below or add a splash of color to the motifs on the opposite page so how are you going to colour these pencils? I'm My mind's already going and reeling and thinking, what colours? I think I'm going to have to just colour them in my absolute favourite colours. There are quite a few and I don't have that many favourite colours. I mean, every colour is beautiful, but maybe that wouldn't be the right idea for these. Maybe I should do something a little bit out of this world. But what about a galaxy pencil, a pencil that colours galaxies or colours rainbows? That'd be cool. And then obviously you've got the little motifs here, which we saw on the front flap. Up, up and away. We all need a good adventure from time to time, even if it's just the daydream variety. Yes, I could do with getting away from it all right now. Doodle some patterns on the hot air balloons opposite. And for a few minutes, allow yourself to drift away into a cloud filled sky. For precise patterns, draw in pencil first, then go over in ink. Um, or you could just go in straight with your pen, up to you. But yeah, we've got three three hot air balloons for you to decorate and a couple of inspirational hot air balloons as well. Cake makes everything better. If you want to avoid the washing up, try drawing your cakes instead of baking them. Creating even the fanciest of cakes is easy peasy. Draw a rectangle, add drippy icing, a few cherries and a wobbly line of jam. 
Then you add your cake stand, grab your pen and ink over your pencil sketch. Once you've mastered this basic method, get fancy. Try triple layer cakes, sprinkles, cake toppers, meringues and fruit flowers candles. Let your imagination run wild. So again, we've got some um, little inspirational cakes here and then you can use this page to create the cakes of your dreams. This would be a fantastic book to share with the kids as well, doing little um, bits of challenges between you and uh, just get, getting inspiration and ideas from the kids as well. You know, what would be your ideal cake and what would it look like? What would it include? And I'm sure that they'll come up with something amazing. So we've got another page here with a quote. It's do more of what makes you happy. I think we can all be reminded of that, can't we? Life is short, so we have precious little time to waste on things that don't bring us joy. Um, let's just skim through this. Turn the page and try something new if you're not feeling something that you've done. It should be fun and challenging but never tiresome. Um, some projects and pages are intended to be dipped in and out of, some are never meant to be finished. If you love colouring birds but aren't a fan of architecture, colour more birds. So just do things what makes you happy. If you don't want to do any drawing in this book, it's totally up to you. Just colour everything or, you know, cut out pieces of magazines, fun colours that you like, make a collage, use the washi tape to fill in the uh, the shapes, you know, do whatever you want. Treat this like an art journal. So this is a doodle game. It's to fill the heart shapes on the opposite page with as many patterns and shapes as you can. This is a great creative exercise to get you thinking of ways to fill spaces in your pictures. Whether it's a rainbow stripe, a flurry of leaves, a mosaic of tiles, it's useful to have a library of patterns you can dip into when drawing. This would be a really, really good page for those of you who do doodle art or zentangling because there are so many patterns you can come up with and that you can find online as well. If you type zentangle, there are loads and they, they, there's some that are really simple and there's some that are really intricate and they take quite a while to master. So think about that or, you know, just do simple patterns, anything you like, anything you can think of. So we're going beneath the ocean waves now and we're exploring a inky coral reef. Bring this collection of underwater illustrations alive with ocean inspired colours and maybe a bit of glitter gel pen. I love small compositions like these. I do as well, actually. They're perfect for when you don't have much time or want a small, complete picture in 10 minutes or so. Have fun hanging out beneath the waves, stay a little longer. Use the space on this page to draw a few tropical fish, a curious sea turtle, or even a sunken treasure chest. So yeah, I really, really like this page as well. Um, it'd be good for maybe testing out pencils as well that you don't usually use, because Joanna Basford paper is like some of the best paper you can use for colour pencil, and pretty much every pencil brand will perform really, really well on it. You, you kind of guaranteed that. So test out some of the different pencils you've got. You could keep them all in the blue and purpley ocean theme, or you could do uh, one in a different colour scheme. You could do a monochrome one, black and white, a sepia one, whatever you like. Fill these planters with your own leafy house plants. So. Again, this is like the shelves earlier on, just filling up the planters with any kind of foliage and flowers and anything you want. So here we've got those robots from the front of the book. They're really, really cute. It says, imagine how simple life would be if we had a few extra hands. Oh my God, yes. As you are colouring these little guys, imagine what super helpful functions they could have in your life. Pencil sharpener robot, laundry folding droid. Yes, please. <laughs> Colour a few of your favourites or the entire Robo Squad. For a shiny metallic effect, experiment with highlights. You can use a white pen or a metallic gel pen or lifting off some of the pencil with an eraser. Best thing to do for that is to use, if you've got one, a battery operated eraser like this because it seems to lift off more of the pigment and it's more precise as well. So um, that's a few different methods of getting highlights. There's lots of different ways of doing that. I tend to just like using a white gel pen. I love a little baking. The simple act of following a recipe and making something delicious and homemade always creates calm in my kitchen. If you haven't got the time or the ingredients to whip up a cake right now, then pick up your pencils and colour these little baking drawings instead. So lots of baking ephemera on these pages. What have we got? We have got a pastry brush, a spatula, a whisk, a wooden spoon, a sieve, a rolling pin, an oven. We've got, I guess, I don't know what these, um, these are. I've totally forgotten the word for this. Oh my goodness. Brain fart. 
it's like a container it's like a milk a carton oh there we go right <laughs> it's a carton of something or other we've got chocolate we've got measuring spoons blocks of sugar we've got honey with a little bee on the edge these are so sweet we've got cookie cutters and oil and weighing scales and oven gloves yeah love this page i can imagine doing all of that in pastel colors actually and that looking fantastic another quote page here we've got every child is an artist have you ever seen a toddler clutching a pack of crayons racked with self-doubt no they're too busy drawing letting their creativity spill out of them with wild abandon and generally living their best lives so that's what we need to do more isn't it we've got so many books and art supplies that are not getting used because we're too scared either to to color in the book and get it wrong or to use up our art supplies that maybe have cost a lot of money and then we don't have them anymore and we've used them up and, and have we used them right or wrong um it's all just unnecessary isn't it and i'm guilty of it as well but I think we all need to make a concerted effort to remember that any art supply or book that is not being coloured in and not being used, it, it's be, that's what is being that's what's wasting. You know, Sarah Renee Clark said something very similar in a recent video of hers that the only way that you are wasting an art supply is by not using it. So use, use, use whatever you've got and don't worry. I think this is one of the things in your life that you don't have to worry about when you colour in. I mean, it's elementary. So what else is she saying now? I've gone off on that tangent. Um, the problem is that we forget as we get older and find ourselves busy in the act of adulting and forget to make time for the simple pleasure of creativity. Then we lose the confidence, telling ourselves, I'm not creative, I can't draw. How many times have I said that? Before you know it, we're too busy ordering groceries and arranging insurance that we don't have time to draw, colour or paint. So yeah, it's it's just about being creative and not forgetting that innate creativity that we all have in us um, and just not letting life take over I guess just remembering how to be creative how to have fun and let go oh we've got a recipe this is oh my goodness it's Joanna's Grand's lemon butter cake a recipe passed down uh, through the generations or between friends use the opposite page to create an illustrated recipe for one of your favorite cakes. So we've got Joanna's grandma's lemon butter cake recipe here, which will be really, really cool to make. I don't like lemon, but my husband does. And I think my eldest child would definitely try it. My youngest, maybe not, but it might be a fun idea to do a video. Do you think making Joanna's grandma's lemon butter cake? I don't know. It might be fun. If you want to see it, let me know. <laughs> and yeah, then you can just take whatever recipe you enjoy and do it on this page and create an illustrated an illustrated recipe what a fantastic idea okay so i adore getting letters in the mail the sight of a handwritten envelope and colorful stamp never fail to bring a smile to my face add a little color to the stamps on the opposite page and decide from where in the world each began its journey so there's something very similar to this in worlds of wonder we had a stamps page i don't think i've done it or have i no i don't think i have i did something else when i did the 16 illustrations over each day can you remember um, acting like you're gonna reply um yeah so we've got a little bit again to do each day whether it's a little ladybird stamp or a snail or a submarine there's just something small and cute for you to do each day so this looks like it's another spherical motif and it's full of doodles that inspired joanna's life things she loves her hobbies her work objects she sees every day it's an all about me illustration now it's your turn. Fill the outline on the opposite page with drawings of meaningful items from your life. Write a list first, noting down everything you'd like to include, then begin doodling. What a fantastic idea. I'm so excited to get into this. This is really giving me those wreck this journal, um, art journal vibes. You know, you get those prompt books. This is really giving me those vibes and it's a great way of personalising your art. So anything that brings you joy, anything that you love or you're interested in, you can draw it in this sphere over here. Let's see what Joanna's put in. She's put pizza, which is the first thing I noticed. You know, that's not a surprise to me that food is the first thing I noticed. So we've got pizza. We have got snowmen, birthday cakes, watermelon. Um, what else? We've got the globe. So does that mean that she likes traveling? I guess uh we've got a little bouquet of flowers we've got bees one of my favorites as well cookies and strawberries and all sorts so really fun to think about what's going to be inside my sphere obviously loads of horror stuff um films and books and coloring of course 
playing with the kids and you know everything else that I enjoy oh we've got snow globes here this is great for this time of year shake up a snow globe and gaze into the mesmerizing flurry of snowflakes and sparkles I've always found these miniature worlds so enchanting use coloring pencils on the next page to bring these domes to life and also add a bit more magic with some glitter or metallic gel pen details so here Joanna says, I often get asked advice on picking colours. If you're feeling a bit unsure, try a limited colour palette with only five or six colours. Say three shades of pink, yellow and a couple of greens and then colour your picture in only those colours. Really, really fantastic tip if you are struggling. Obviously you can use um, colour palettes and things like that. You can pull up any picture on Google and there are websites that will convert that picture into a palette of colours. You could do that. Um, of course, you could use Sarah's colour catalogue, which I've reviewed. If you type colour catalogue on my channel, you'll find it. And like Joanna says, you could just go through your pencil set, blindly pick out a few different pencils and just commit to colouring only with those shades. You are never too old for ice cream. Never, never. <laughs> I only had an ice cream the other day, actually. What did I have? Um, I had a feast. I don't know whether you have those in America. They're probably called something else, but a feast over here. It's like um, it's it's an ice cream on a stick. So I guess you'd call it a popsicle, but it's it's a chocolate ice cream with a chocolate coating, like a hard shell, and on the coating it's got little bits of nuts. And then inside, once you've taken all the ice cream off and licked it all off, you've got a big chunk of chocolate on the stick that's left over. It's gorgeous. Anyway. Uh, follow these simple step-by-step -step guides to create your own glorious section of ice creams and popsicles. So you can do the first four steps in pencil and then grab your pen and draw over your lines in ink. Um, and then get experimental. Add whipped cream, drizzles of sauce, cherries, sprinkles and as many wafers as you want. So here we've got the step-by-step -step of how to do an ice cream and a popsicle. So do these first four in pencil and then you can finish off in ink. Same with the popsicle or the lollipops, we call them over here. Ice lolly, yeah. Um, <laughs> lollipops more of like, a, not an ice cream. Anyway, tangent. And then we've got a few more different things that you can do here. You can add sprinkles, flakes, whatever it is you want. So you'll draw all those over here. Just gonna do a focus check, there we go. So another quote, inspire, not intimidate. I love sharing pictures of your colouring. When I spot an amazing piece of work, a page completed with such incredible skill that I stop in my tracks to peer closer, I have to share it. I post these images to inspire, to show what's possible and prompt us all to try and get better. It's important though to feel inspired when you see these pictures, not intimidated. The person who coloured that page might have been colouring every day for six years and this might be your first attempt. Comparison is the thief of joy. The only work you should compare yours to is the work you created yesterday. So again, it's about that progress, not perfection. Seeing things change as you as you carry on with the with the hobby, and um, just not comparing yourself to anybody else. But it is really nice to see those fantastically coloured pictures because it can give you some ideas of what to do with your own mediums and things. Sharpen those colouring pencils and let's bring this freshly picked page to life. Oh, lovely. Will you go traditional and use nature as your colour palette or will you go bananas and create entirely new varieties of these familiar fruits? Purple pineapples, rainbow raspberries, I can't wait to see what you come up with. And it says here, can you spot a fruit that's often mistaken as a vegetable? I'm going to go and say that they that Joanna's put a tomato in here somewhere because that's the only thing I can think of that's often mistaken for a vegetable. Unless it's like an avocado or something. Are these avocados? I don't know. Isn't an avocado has got to be a fruit, hasn't it? Because it's got the stone. I don't know. I don't like them. They're gross. Um, doodles are inky daydreams. Allow your mind and your pen to wander as you fill the opposite page with loops and squiggles. These loose, carefree drawings are fun to create and meander across the page, growing organically. So yeah, just do anything you like on this page. Just don't even think about it. Get your pencil and just start doodling. Almost do it unconsciously or subconsciously. Oh, this is a big one. Bath time. Not sure if it's that scent of lavender and sandalwood, the bubbles, or just the tranquil quiet of a candlelit bathroom, but there's something rather blissful about a bath. This is making me sad because I've had my bath removed um, a couple of months ago. I now only have a shower and I really miss my baths now. It's getting colder. I used to have a bath, at, you know, at least once a day. 
every single day of winter because I get really freezing cold, like cold to the core. And the only thing that can warm me up is my bath. In fact, I'm sat here at the moment, proofing the pudding with a really old ratty um, hot water bottle behind my back because <laughs> I just get really, really cold. Um, so yeah, give your bath time bliss fix, or get your bath time bliss fix by colouring this dainty little bathtub inspired pattern. Colour as much or as little as you like, flood both pages in colour or just do a small section and leave the rest for the next day. So this is, it looks as though it's a, it's a, a copied design, what's the word? Here I go again, it looks as though it's a, like a wallpaper design. So these bottles are all exactly the same and they've just been copied and copied. So maybe a little bit of mindless colouring to be done there. Often when I'm feeling panicky or having a bit of a, a crap day mentally, I often revert back to doing things that don't require a lot of thought, like mandalas and things like that. So this page might be really good for me to get stuck into on one of those days when I just want to colour and not think. Stop and smell the flowers. Lose yourself for half an hour or so. And oh, I've really read that wrong, haven't I? Stop and smell the flowers. <laughs> Lose yourself for half an hour or so amid the petals in this pretty sphere. There is a little break in the blossoms. Will you leave that space empty, allowing the blooms to breathe? Or will you fill it with more flowers or a sprinkling of butterflies and bees? Do whatever you like. I think this might be the one. Yeah, it is off the little card. Lovely. Let's go fly a kite. Add patterns, shapes and details to the kites on the opposite page. Stripes, stars, polka dots, zigzags, anything goes. So just decorating some kites. This quote is to go outside the lines. True confession, I go over the lines all the time. So do I, Joanna, so do I. I'm always doing it. Uh, and I, I, I don't care either because I'm so fast with things. I don't like colouring and pages and things to drag on and on. I want to get it done and move on to the next one. So I'm always going outside the lines. Um, they're just a guide. It's up to you how to complete the picture. You are the artist. So, you know, maybe sometimes if you don't want the lines there, you can wipe them out with some, I don't know, some pen white or a you know, white gel pen. Get rid of the lines and completely do whatever you like. There's no right or wrong colours um just just do anything i think this is just telling you to literally let your inner artist out and just go for it these kaleidoscope butterfly motifs will look beautiful in bright jewel shades and equally pretty in soft muted tones what would you choose with designs like this i like to batch all the similarly colored objects together for example i'd color all the butterflies first then the blossoms then the foliage this leaves me less prone to forgetting which colours I've used if I want the design to have a consistent colour palette. And that is a really lovely little segue into one of my books that you might want to pick up a copy of. The Colouring Log. I'm not going to stay on this for long because I'm aware that I'm sort of just jumping on this bandwagon. But this is where you can write down whatever page you're doing the artist, what page name or number it is, the materials you've used, and then just swatch down all your colours and what you've used them for on the page. So if you are going in and out of this book, which is what it's meant for, you might want to make a note of any colours that you've used on a particular illustration if you're going to come back to it another day. So yeah, that's really good for that. It's, it's on Amazon. I'll leave the link in the description, but I just thought that was a really good little segue into uh, promoting that little book. So... Adorned in patterns and embellishments, these pretty lanterns are the perfect addition to any party. Add details to the simple lanterns on the opposite page using the ones on this page as your inspiration. Again, start in pencil, then go over it in pen and then you can add some colour. So lovely lanterns. Hello pencil lovers, these are fun pages for colouring with your favourite art supplies. While the pattern is mainly, pa mainly pencils, there are also a few crayons and pastels in there too colour them all in or just a few and include your favourite shades so another kind of wallpaper type illustration there and you will have noticed as we go through that there is nothing catching here in the spine uh, or the gutter of the book so don't worry about getting your pens and pencils into the centre for me flowers and nature are endlessly inspiring and constantly calming there's no hustle and bustle here just a couple of simple floral motifs waiting to flourish Will you opt for delicate muted tones or bold tropical bright ones? So you can add some blooms to the leaves on this page as well if you like. A simple floral flame, floral, I swear, Joanna, <laughs> you're trying to make me trip over my words. 
A simple floral frame like this is the ideal page for an inspirational quote, your favourite poem or lyrics from a song you love. Use a pencil to sketch each flower. I draw the stem, then the petals and finish with the leaves. Continue sketching blooms around the entire oval, then use your pen to go over the pencil sketch. Wait for the ink to dry and gently erase the pencil lines and you can add some words in the centre as well. So we've come to the end. It says you did it. Congratulations on completing the 30 days of creativity challenge. Uh, this is just the beginning. Go back and complete some of the pages, add more details and embellishments, keep the momentum going. You've got this. So then we've got our colour palette test page in the back that you can test out all of your mediums, see what they look like, see how they blend, see if they bleed through the paper. Do that on the back as well. And then we've got more of the same in the flap. <laughs> so that's it. I am really, 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 really happy with this. I think I like it even more than the Inky Wonderlands book because, I mean, that book was great because it sort of taught us the fundamentals and the basics of how Joanna illustrates. But this is fantastic because we can, I think we can add much more of our own stamp on it, if that makes sense. Even though we've we've been given a lot of illustration, We've also been given a lot of space to do what we want to do and just the little prompts and the, the, the constant text throughout the book, it's kind of like having Joanna with you, spurring you on, saying like, have a go at this, give this a go, see what happens, don't worry. And um, yeah, I really, really like it. So massive, massive thank you to Joanna and her team for sending out this pack. I'm really, really pleased with all the little bits that you've included. Very, very grateful indeed. And um, yeah, I'm gonna obviously leave the link for you to buy this. I don't know if it's out just yet, but maybe by the time you watch this, it will be. I can't remember the dates, but there will be links in the description, whether that's to pre-order or to buy now. And yeah, get yourself a copy, get yourself a copy. Even if you don't think you can draw, remember what Joanna said, Rem pretend you're a kid, forget all the rules, forget all the worry, and just go for it and see what happens. Nobody's judging it, nobody's marking it. Um, yeah, anyway, that's it. I'll shut up now. Thank you again, Joanna, for that wonderful uh, present. And thank you for watching. And I'll see you soon on Colour with Claire.